You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network. This is September the 3rd, 2018. With you today is myself, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. It's September, and that means we are one month away from the start of hockey season. We have almost survived another summer, Joel. That sounds ominous. Like, we've almost survived, but we're not going to. Like we, who knows what's gonna happen? I don't wanna, I don't wanna count any eggs before they're hatched. We and doesn't a hockey season start sooner than a month, or do we just like preseason doesn't count? Let's just forget about that. I don't. Do you get excited about preseason? Like I'm excited because I'm like I know hockey's coming, but I'm I'm never amped for the start of watching players who I won't see the rest of the season play. I mean, I'm sort of looking forward to seeing John Tavares in a Leafs jersey. That'll be fun. Yeah. So I will probably watch Maple Leaf preseason games. Well, there you go. Joel will be watching. I won't be. Um, And that's fine. That's very good. I discovered um, something very exciting literally mere seconds ago. Um I might need to change the dates for a trip that I have planned. I was planning to be in Las Vegas starting on December 28th this this winter. Okay. December 27th, the Avalanche play in Vegas. Hey, so I should probably that. I should probably change that a little bit and leave leave a day earlier. How expensive is that going to be like imagine tickets are a lot more expensive this year. Like they have to raise tickets. Like that seems like a thing you should do. So what every team does. I don't know if they would like immediately, but you have to pay for Nate Schmidt's steroids. So those things don't come cheap, Joel. Those things do not come cheap. I cannot. I know. I know we're saving that for later. I cannot wait to talk about that. (laughs) <laughs> why do well, we don't have to wait no we let's wait about... let's let's move let's talk about other things first let's leave that because i want i want the suspense to build okay um before we get into the show let's remind everyone about the fine folks at atb financial the official bank of the fourth line podcast head over to atb.com slash community and see all the ways that they are involved in the community the way that they are supporting you without you even supporting them. So if you do that, maybe help them support you by using them. Uh, ATB.com slash listens as well. You can find out all the ways that uh, you and them can work together to make your banking the most successful thing possible. Rules, Joel. We got some weird rules coming in. And I'm going to hit us with the three weirdest rules. There's one more that I had that I need to to find here. Um, But let's start with one. What, how much do you know about goalie sticks? Do you know anything about goaltenders' hockey sticks? They are bigger than regular hockey sticks. Can confirm. Yeah, that is a thing that is true. Um, do you know anything about colors with them? No. Well, there is a, a fact, a rule... You have to have white tape, or the knob of your stick for a goaltender has to be white. And if it's not white, it has to be covered in white tape. You know, for Avalanche fans, Patrick Waugh pulled uh, pulled John Van Beesbrook when they were playing the Panthers in the finals. He didn't have a white knob. Had to fix it. Some mind games from a little Patrick Waugh. Why do you think that matters? Why do you think it has to be white? It doesn't matter. And that seems like, that's like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I'm not sure the reasoning behind why, like I I could, no, I don't know why it has to be white. I have no idea why it would matter if you, 
have a, a black one. Like, it's not like you're going to, even if it matters, like, it's going to get confused with the puck. It's about, like, it's up here at your shoulder or lower. Like, it doesn't doesn't matter where it is. I don't get it at all. I, like, I'm, I'm trying to, under, like, it just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it makes zero sense. Yeah. So that you can, like, sneak attack. The guy can't see it. Yeah, it do- it makes no sense. Um, but that is that is a rule that the NHL has. Stick knobs have to be white for goalies. Um, speak. Let, let's stay on goalies for a second. One. This is one that I find um, also interesting. I I kind of maybe understand this one. The last rule we have, I do not understand how that's a rule at all. Um, can you or can you not change goaltenders for a shootout? You cannot. You cannot change goalies during a shootout. You can change goalies before the shootout. Didn't you just ask during the shootout? Yeah. So I said no. I think I said four. Oh. So, yeah. I so figured, you know. I figured you can change. Yeah, I figured you could change before. But I figured, like, unless the guy's injured, I'm sure you can't change. I Like, yeah, you can't. That makes sense. I get that. Yeah. Now, here is the rule that I personally think is the weirdest rule that someone brought up to us. Are you aware that a player can referee their own game? Like, like street ball, call your own fouls? No, like an actual NHL game can be officiated by a player whose team is playing in the game. Yeah, that's what happens when you play, like, street basketball, man. You just, like, referee your own games. Yeah, no, this is this is an NHL game could be officiated by a player with this... The street rules, I like it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I get yeah. behind this. Um, I, I, I don't believe you, but um, is, the, is that actually a rule? From from the source that I am reading, here is the way that it goes. So, should a referee accidentally leave the ice or receive an injury which incapacitates him from discharging his duties while play is in progress, the game shall be automatically stopped. Makes sense. If the referee is unable to continue, the referee the game shall continue using the one referee and two linesman system. Right. Also makes sense. If one of the referees is unable to continue to officiate, the remaining referee shall perform the duties of that one. Okay. If through misadventure or sickness, the referees and linesmen appointed are prevented from appearing, the league will make every attempt to find suitable replacement officials. Otherwise, The managers or coaches of the two clubs shall agree on a referee and linesman. If they are unable to agree, they shall appoint a player from each side who shall act as a referee and linesman. The player of the home club acting as referee and the player of the visiting club as linesman. If the regularly appointed officials appear during the progress of the game, they shall at once replace the temporary officials. I want that to happen so bad. That will never happen. No. No. I love the fact that they had to put that in there. Like, if we can't find another official to do this game, like, maybe we, let's just get the players to do it. That's that's crazy. It is super crazy. I don't, like, I don't get that at all. And, like, can you imagine... Like, is it, and essentially it's going to be like, I'm trying to think of who it could be. It's going to be like, if it was the Leafs, it'd be like Josh Levo because he never plays. So they'd be like, you're the referee, Josh. Like, or like Cal Clutterbuck. Like, it's going to be something like. It's going to not... be a fourth, a fourth liner who's going to be like, yeah. nope, that, that call's legit. We're going to let that one stand. Yeah, yeah I don't. So weird. Like in in what circumstance? I assume that like if if you if you can't find someone, and then you you like put it out over the PA system during warmups, 
You say like, we are looking for anyone who is a certified official in any league. In like the fifteen to 4,000 people, depending on if you're at a Panthers game or a, a regular game, um, in the stands, I would think someone there has to be an official of some sort at some level. No. No. It, like maybe in Canada and like some of the bigger American markets. You're not like no one going to a Coyotes game is, an, is a like hockey official. I would say like like kids level is what I'm talking or has at some point officiated something. I've got to think that you you have at least two officials in the stands. Like the 14-year-old kid that refs Tim Bits hockey just like it's, is exactly. now is now refing an NHL game. It's like the 36-year-old accountant that got to play goaltender in an NHL game. If that can happen, I want this to happen. I want this to happen so bad. Okay, if you want it to happen so bad, it gets to happen for your Colorado Avalanche on the road. Um, no, thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in the playoffs. Well, I'm I'm just glad we're in the playoffs. Yeah, but you're about you're about to lose a game in the playoffs. Let me tell you. And uh, and uh, and apparently someone to injury probably. Can you like? I I don't get how like is this one of those like rules that just like they've forgotten about and they're like we should probably take this out guys like should we should we email someone in the league and be like hey guys like this is actually a thing you should yeah. probably fix this yeah I don't know what the what you do to to get rid of that but um it kind of I don't know like what what else would you have just like just don't play the game. Just cancel the game. Yeah, that yeah. seems like a better option than having two players officiate it. Because you, like, could you imagine a playoff game like this though? Because like a team could totally. It's like, well, we don't have any officials, so we got to push the playoff game. Like a team could legitimately be like, no, it's in the rules. It says we elect a player from each team to ref. So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I would feel like that. That would be insane. We need this to happen so bad telling you well it's gonna be it'll never it is obviously never gonna happen like no um that's crazy yeah it very much is the other thing that um that i find crazy about it is is that yeah it, it's not hasn't been taken out i also um so the source that i have it from is uh rule 31 so if you want to go go look that up uh you can go and do that um, not much has happened this week in the world of hockey. Uh, this week on the show, we'll be talking about the one big contract. We were waiting, last week we talked about waiting for RFAs to sign. One of them signed this week. Um, Noah Hannafin with the Flames. Nate Schmidt got suspended for steroids. And the Philadelphia Flyers are on the summer hot seat. Let's start with Noah Hannafin. He got a brand new contract with his brand new team, Hedna Calgary, six years, a cap hit of 4.95, which I feel like is a reasonable amount for what they would expect Noah Hannafin to be on this team. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> it's just like, Anytime something comes up with Hannafin or Lindholm and you're just like, yeah, but they could have had Dougie Hamilton. Right. Like, it's like, oh, like, this is great. It's like, yeah, sure. It's like, fine. It's like, whatever. You're paying a 21 year old five mil for the next six years, whatever. But you know what you could have had? One of the best defensemen in the league. Yeah, if you you could have paid Dougie Hamilton five point seven five million dollars, or you can pay Elias Lindholm and Noah Hannafin nine point seven five million dollars. Yeah, I like it's just so it's kind of like whatever. But it was going to be that's always going to be like part of the thing until until like what like like Hamilton has three years left. 
Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't. I don't know. I it's it's fine. It's whatever. It's like it's kind of. It's, I guess that's essentially what I would expect. Yeah, that's one hundred percent what what I was thinking. Noah Hannafin would probably get. I was thinking around like that region, um, and you know that's moderately comparable to what other players have been getting. If we look at you know some of the other RFAs still to come, this is what you know Darnell Nurse, Shea Theodore. If you're not going bridge deal on these guys, that's about what you can expect them to be signing as well. Side note: thirty one point eleven. On the, in the official rule book of NHL.com. There you go. That is where it's it's in there. See, you're you're on the NHL rule book. You see it. Yeah, it's like the NHL.com official rule book. It's there. There you go. They should probably not have that there. This is crazy. <laughs> I love that you're like this can't be a thing. I'm just I'm just gonna go check. I'm just gonna I, double check. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, I got, I got to check to see if this is still in there. Oh, it's like, do we? We said prizes, right? Yeah, prizes. I'm. That's I'm the going, craziest rule, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm fine. Yeah, that whoever sent that in, sure. That's that's a uh, well, Michael Laborn. Congrats, you, you stumped us. You came up with the craziest rule. That shouldn't be a rule. Don't let this happen, or do. Let it happen in like a Coyotes Panthers game. That that's a thing that should happen. Yeah. Except it wouldn't happen. Like what what circumstances would have to lead to this? Cuz I'm look I'm thinking like a snowstorm. But then like the teams the, it's something where the teams manage to get there but the officials don't. No, I think it's I think it is you just have to have two officials get injured during the game. That's probably the most likely scenario. So you have Two officials heard in a game. Can linesmen take over for officials? That's something about the rule book. I was looking for that. I Doesn't would really think so. Because in this situation, you're only rolling with two anyways, right? Like you have one linesman, one official, one ref. I would assume that you just take... It's better to take a linesman and put them as a ref. Than a player and put them as a ref. Yeah. So basically, so what you need... This is what you need to happen. Is... So one official gets food poisoning because he has a snack before the game, gets food poisoning during the game. So that's sickness. Sickness. The, the other three no, misadventure. No, no. no, the misadventure happens when the linesman collides with the referee because there's only one referee. So he's having to cover all of the ice. So he's moving around the ice a lot more. At a high rate of speed. At a high rate of speed. <laughs> Runs into the linesman. They both get injured. Okay, so now you're down to one linesman. So you do one linesman, one player referee then maybe? I was going to say, because at that point, like, do you put the linesman as the ref? Hold it. The last linesman, he is helping those two injured off the ice. And Dennis Weidman shows up <laughs> and knocks him out. Yeah, he goes full, full Kool-Aid man on them. Because he's just like, my buddy over in Vegas gave me some roids and now I'm raging. And boom. I like this. That's, that's how it plays out. Like, So food poisoning, Dennis Weidman, and recklessness. That's the only way that we will ever have this happen. I, I bet. What if you another way? I would assume that this would cause mass chaos. But what if like because the NFL had a few years ago where they had like replacement refs because the refs union was on strike. What if just like all the like five minutes before the game, all the officials were like, we're not playing anymore. We want a better deal. And the NHL was left with like, well, we need somebody. At 7 o'clock, game started at 7.05, the officials are like, we're not playing tonight, deal with it. That's not misadventure, but you don't have anyone. Yeah. Well, that's, this is what they're, they're ruling out. Like, you're never going to have replacement referees. 
Because like it's just going to be players. <laughs> it's just going to be players. Do you get <laughs> do you get a double salary that night? Like, do you get paid by the league, or is this a volunteer role that you're taking on? No, you, you don't put that on your resume. You lose your game check as a player, and you get a referee check. Sorry for you. <laughs> yeah, that's much worse. <laughs> Here's your three hundred dollars. Yeah, I don't know. That's like I don't know how much a referee makes. It's probably not very much. Yeah, it's it's probably more than three hundred a game. Uh, yeah, three hundred a game would be like twenty four thousand a year. It's more yeah. than three hundred a game. Maybe you never know. They don't make like they don't make very much money because like, like they all have other jobs. Not in the NHL. Oh, they totally have other jobs. An NHL referee makes your starter salary. So you're saying you're going starting salary twenty five thousand dollars. Oh my! Some it's not. They're gonna have another job. It's one hundred fifteen thousand dollars. They do not need another job. Wow! Yeah, That's that is your that is your job. Why are they so bad? They are like, the highest paid officials in sports. Are NHL officials, and they still. This is the only thing that they do is to figure out how to officiate a game, and they're, and they're still that bad. And they're really bad at it. That's why they don't only have tiny screens for them to look at for video review because they spend all the other money on salary. They can't buy like the big ipads for them or a tv like the nba does how much does the linesman make well let's find out because they must be making okay on the website that i'm on as of 2013 referees are 165 to 360 linesmen are 110 to 230 there you go so that's, that's crazy and you, they can make up to eighteen thousand dollars per round, referees of the playoffs, depending on how many games. That's pretty good. No, just kidding. No, it's not good. It's if it's four or seven, they make the same amount. So they're just one sweeps all the time. This is crazy. They make way too much money to be awful at their jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to uh, Gary Bettman's world. Thanks, he also Bettman. Makes, he also makes too much money to be terrible at his job, but he does. So that's that's the world we live in. So I guess the NHL's not the officials are not going to be walking out. So this is not going to happen from that realm either because they're just making way too much money. Yeah. Anyways, Noah Hannafin he got paid. We're we're waiting on more. Uh, at what point, as as someone, and I, I'm not going to put a jest with William Nylander, but how close to the start of the season do you start to get worried that your player is not going to be in the opening day lineup? Um, basically, like, well, like, Goudreau, he basically, after he signed, he basically played the next game, did he not? I believe so. So... You're hoping he sign. You're hoping your player signs by at least that last week of training camp or preseason. I mean, I guess. Yeah. So you want them like first week of October? Yeah, I would really, really like Nylander to sign like today. Okay, so once we finish recording this episode, you would like Nylander to have his bridge deal in place. No, I would like a long term deal, and I would like them him. And Matthews to have a press conference together. Where they put the C on Matthews' jersey. And they announced Nylander's extension. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I don't think they give Matthews the C until he signs eight years. That's my that's, theory. Seems like a solid logic. But, like, because everyone's like, it's time for Matthews to get the C. And I'm like, it's time for Matthews to get the C when he signs an eight-year contract. Yeah, it's also time for him to <laughs> put his name on some papers. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but I don't know. Like, I'm not I, I'm not super worried. Like, well, NHL not... season starts exactly one month from today, October 3rd. So by September 26th, Joel's starting to get worried. That's one it's... week out. From the start of the season, I'm try- I'm looking at the names, and I was like, I don't think there's any real names that I would be worried about. The only name that like maybe I'd be worried about is Morrissey, because like it just seems like Winnipeg is determined to tick off their RFAs. Like that's that just seems like that's what they're prepared to do. 
Yeah. Um, like I look, looking at some of these, I think you would have, you know, if Edmonton, if Edmonton wants to try to make the playoffs, they need Darnell Nurse. Um, cause like with Sekera not being a thing anymore, you need someone to play defense there. They can't just start keep trading Hart Trophy winners for defensemen. Um, so yeah, I would like that's the guy who I would say is most needed for his team. And you know what? Shea Theodore, they just lost a defenseman in Vegas for the first 20 games of the season. So he's pretty important there, too. Let's go to uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> Nate Schmidt handed a 20-game suspension for failing a performance-enhancing drug test. You've got thoughts. Let's start with you, Joel. Oh, uh, can we? Do you have his statement pulled up about what he said? Can we? Can we read that first before I have thoughts? Yeah, we sure can. Here's Nate Schmidt's statement. One of the experts in environmental contamination who testified on my behalf at the appeal hearing described the amount of the substance found in my system, seven billionths of a milligram per milliliter, as the equivalent of a pinch of salt in an Olympic-sized pool. Another expert analyzed a sample of my hair and concluded there was no evidence of intentional use. The Vegas Golden Knights track player strength and performance metrics, and my results have remained constant over the past year. While I support the perform- the strong performance-enhancing substances program in place, it is difficult to accept this suspension. I understand that I will miss these games, but I do not agree with this suspension, and I will not accept being labeled as a cheater. I have worked my whole life to become an NHL player, and I am extremely proud to be a player in the NHL. As well in his statement, he said, The fact I am issuing this statement is surreal to me as I have only used supplements provided by my NHL team, and I have always been extremely careful about what I put into my body. What are the Vegas Golden Knights putting into Nate Schmidt's body? That's the real question we have to ask ourselves here. I have so that is so many thoughts about this. There's a, there's a lot a lot to unpack in there. Uh, so depending on what it was, like not every substance that you put into your body like shows you either have it or you don't. It can like decrease in like I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It, like the decreases over time yeah yeah it decreases over time so just because it's very low right when he was tested doesn't mean that it was always that low like it's not it's not like he's like i barely put it into my system i just took it yesterday like there's nothing there it's like it could have been a month or two in between i don't know how often nhl players get tested so but like basically whatever whenever he got tested Whatever he took was supposed to be out of his system. So, um, and also, I am not, this whole thing, you will probably notice already, this is not allegedly, he did this. He tested positive, he did it. I don't care, like... He tested positive, he appealed it, he brought in experts for his appeal, and he was denied his appeal as well. He... You are a professional athlete. You need to know what's going in. And it, like, so I don't, I don't buy it at all. I 100% believe that he did it intentionally because you don't take roids or performance-enhancing drugs unintentionally. That is not a thing that professional athletes do. They know what they're doing. I don't buy it at all. Yeah. Um, so the NHL, the players are tested twice a year um, randomly. Uh, so they show up and they say, hey, Nate, guess what? It's drug day. Um, no one has ever tested positive for drugs and been like, you got me. Yeah, I've been, I've been taking steroids this whole time. You finally caught me. Um, I would say that one, you know, Nate Schmidt, not not an old player. So it's not like you should expect him to have a regression over the course of a season, but like, if your strength testing is at the same peak, I don't. I'm not well versed in uh, as a, as not a professional athlete. I would say that like there's a chance that over the course of the year there should be some fluctuations. Maybe the fact that you're constant testing is a thing. 
Um, again, maybe you took it last year. Maybe you've stopped taking it. And this seven billionths of a milligram, which I don't know who is doing the drug testing for the NHL. But what I do know is that you probably aren't able to measure seven billionths of a milligram per milliliter. So, like, imagine you you take a milligram of something and you put it into one milliliter of fluid and then you cut it seven billionths of that. I am almost certain that you are not measuring that in your test NHL. I'm I'm quite impressed that you are. And yes, I would say that maybe, maybe you should have a threshold where you could say, you know what, the tolerance of our equipment is such that we can only measure one millionth of a milligram per milliliter. Anything below that, we won't go. So I don't know where this seven billionths number comes from. Um, but that, I love the specificness. Like, it's obviously, it came from somewhere. He, if, unless he made it up on the spot but, in a fit of rage, that would also bring me joy. But isn't, didn't he say, like, it was his witness that, so, like, who knows? Like, so, like, maybe the NHL does have, like, I'm sure that, like, I'm sure they have some sort of like, like because like it's the same thing like with testosterone levels, right? Like, like in in the Olympic sports, like they have like you can be within a certain level, right? And so there's got to be like there's a there's a scale that like so yeah I don't I don't know like my guess is that it wasn't s- so small. And the other thing is is like it's not. I saw someone make this comment on Twitter about this. It's not like when you take a performance enhancing substance all of a sudden your entire blood gets changed with this substance it's going to be really small i don't know how like i i i don't no idea i don't understand how this works but all i know is that if it was big enough to be traced and it was big enough that when the appeal process like the person who was ruling on the appeal was like no there's evidence that it was in the, in your system they didn't mess up the testing there wasn't a like the protocol was all done properly there's no like it was there you're suspended like i just don't get how like i i get it you you and like it or not Nate Schmidt you are forever going to be labeled as a cheater yeah for sure and and the other thing that i look at like there are hundreds of hockey players in the NHL the AHL who are not getting suspended for steroids or performance enhancing substances every single season. Nate Schmidt manages to be one and then tries to say I didn't I didn't cheat, I'm not a cheater. Everyone else manages to not be labeled as a cheater. You're doing something wrong. Like no one else is is failing their tests and losing appeals. I can guarantee you that the Vegas Knights are now going to, because he decided to throw his team under the bus, like they're going to be tested probably more than they're supposed to be this next year. Yeah. Cause like, like, Oh, Hey, Hey Nate, if you're only getting what your team's giving you, how come everyone else on your team hasn't been busted for roids? And also how did your team magically have a great season when no one expected you to be good? Mm. How did that happen? Nate? Roids. Steroids. All the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, I, the, the only issue that I have with this, uh, 20 game suspension, he's going to be missing a quarter of the season, and I'm fine with that. If you cheat, you should be caught. There is no sliding scale. He doesn't get seven billionths of a suspension for only having seven billionths of a milligram in his system. Um, it, this, the CBA says... The, the NHL's drug enforcement policy says first time, 20 games, second time, 60 games, and a uh, a program. You have to go through uh, a program for evaluation and treatment, and the third time, you're gone. You're done. So, Nate, don't do it again, or you're out of the league. Um, the no, longest... He's only, he can do it once more. That's true, yeah. But... Um, then then you're def... If you do it twice, Nate, then you're definitely labeled as a cheater. Um Last year, the largest suspension handed out by the National Hockey League was 10 games. So so what's worse, taking steroids or hitting someone in the face with a stick? So the the largest suspension, there was three 10-game suspensions. One was on Alex Burrows for his uh, 
Neon Knee of Taylor Hall. Uh, Radko Gudas slashed Matthew Perot in the head. You may remember that one. And Luke Bukowski came back to the ice after being kicked out of the game by an official. Uh, those were the three 10-game suspensions that were handed out last year. You combine two of those. You could have Alex Burrow or Radko Gudas could have slashed Matthew Perot, left the ice, and then come back onto the ice and gotten a 20-game suspension, according to this math, or uh, had a pinch of salt in a swimming pool like Nate Schmidt does. Well, it's not like like everyone knows that this like I'm not I'm happy with the suspension of Nate Schmidt, but I'm also like like there's no secret that like the NHL if they want to actually crack down on guys playing dirty, they need to suspend harsher. So I I was actually wondering about because like so Robinson Cano. Second baseman or first baseman, I think now of the Seattle Mariners. Yeah, he is. He got suspended for PEDs, eighty games. I think it was eighty games. Yep. He is not eligible for the postseason now. Yeah, I like that. I think like I would be up for that, like in any sport. I like that if you're gonna if you're gonna cheat. You're going to get your suspension, and then you can't help your team during the playoffs. Yeah, because you are still reaping. That's the thing with performance enhancing drugs. Even though you aren't testing positive for them now, you're still reaping the rewards of it. Exactly. Like It's, it's not like you just turn back into some emaciated, muscleless me um, once, you, once you stop taking them. Yeah, I would, I'd be down with that, and I, I 100% support it because it, the fact is it, it doesn't say how much, it doesn't say what. If you are caught taking them 20 games, I'm fine with that. Uh, just be better with your other suspensions, NHL. Get good. Um, it looks ridiculous when someone when you, someone tries and you know, hits someone in the head. Doesn't try, hits someone in the head, and uh, they get half the suspension of a guy who takes performance enhancing drugs. Um, well, but that's every sport. Every sort PEDs is way harsher. So NFL's four games usually. Baseball's yeah. eighty. But like if you get like so a targeting hit to the head in the NFL on a defensive receiver might get you one game. Well then everyone needs to get better then. Right. So like it's <clears throat> so they are saying like every league is saying I get I don't know how I don't know how they're, the they're NBA saying, works. They're saying but. the worst thing you can do is take drugs, take yeah. performance enhancing drugs. Well, and like, um, I guess I don't know. Even like, I'm trying to think how long did Roberto Azuna get? Not even suspended. He got paid the entire time. He got put on leave. Yeah, he got put on leave, but he wasn't allowed to play. Yeah, for... he missed. He missed uh, what, like, forty, fifty, sixty games. So. So not even as much. Seventy five games. That's how okay. much missed. So, so he almost less, as much. Almost Al- as bad as taking steroids for uh his participation in the allegations against him. So So domestic violence not quite as bad as PEDs. Slightly um, worse than a pinch of salt in an ocean in a pool. Just a disclaimer, this is not the views of the Fourth Line Podcast. <laughs> it this is, is the views, views of professional sports leagues. Yes. The, yeah. we, we do not hold those views. We are just relaying what we see and hear from professional sports leagues. Yeah. They're not, not good. Um, let's, go, let's go to something a little... Yay sports. Yay sports. Let's talk about the Philadelphia Flyers. This is our summer hot seat segment. Every week, we put a team on the old Twitter, and we say, what team do you want us to talk about next week? Last time, it was the Flyers, the Penguins, the Blues, and the Sharks. The Flyers ran away with it. People want to know our thoughts on the Philadelphia Flyers. They are a team that last year had had some struggles. They made the playoffs, though. 
Not even as a wild card. They did make the playoffs. And they did well for themselves Mm -hmm. in their efforts. Um, where Where do you stand on the Flyers heading into this season? I stand the same place that I stand that everyone stands every year for the Flyers. Which is they need a goalie. If only they had a goalie. If only they had a goalie. Cause like Brian Elliott, Nyeverth, Neverth, Nierverth, Nyeverth. I don't know how to say that guy's name. Neuverth. So, Neuverth. Whatever. Let's play where where's he from? Canada, probably. Mm, he's Czech. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is quickly becoming Joel's least favorite game, and just like I don't, I don't care about this game anymore. This is no, I like that game. I just don't like this guy because like he just won't retire, and we have to continue saying his name because like people still <laughs> think he is like an NHL capable goalie. Well, he was the best goaltender on this team last year, doesn't, so doesn't say much. Uh, best goaltender on a playoff team says something. It says we need a better goalie. That's what it says. That's what, that's what it says. This team, like seriously, this team, they're like they're like three or four pieces away from probably being a really good team. I think. So what what pieces? You mentioned goalie. So they need a goalie, and they they're- have Mr. Carter Hart in the wings. Yeah, I mean, to try to be that goalie. Who knows, right? Who knows if that, like, goalies, pros, goalie prospects are such a crapshoot. Like, you just have no idea. And especially, I know everyone got very, very, very excited about what Carter Hart did in uh, in the WHL last year. As you should, right? He was fantastic with the silver tips. However, he was also a 19-year-old goalie in a league with a lot of people younger than him. He's, you know, he did make some changes to his play. Um but I'm not 100% sold on the fact that Carter Hart is as good as that showed. Yes. Sorry, my, like, headphones all of a sudden stopped working. Well, that's nice. And the speakers started, I don't know, could you hear yourself there? I heard a, I heard a bading. Okay, a yeah. yeah. Like, my headphones we, decided to te- stop working. Technology is not our friend. Oh, right? this is, oh, so. But, okay, Carter Hart, though, like... He's at least two years away, probably. Like, goaltenders just don't, like, they take a while to get ready. He's got to play a couple years in the AHL, most likely. And yeah. even then, he may not be good. Like, he might be good. He might be great. Like, it's just, you have no idea. Here's the thing. So, the last, like, I think back to the last time that a, a young goaltender would have come in. So, he's 20 years old. We take Carey Price. Carey Price, good at hockey. He came in. And had a very good season his first year. He had a 920 save percentage as a 20-year-old. Is it possible to do that as a 20-year-old? Yes. That would require Carter Hart. And he only played 40 games that season. That was when he split time with Halak. So, sure, you have... Carter Carter Hart Hart is not Carey Price. Carter Hart does it right. But you also need Carter Hart to be Carey Price level. Yeah, that's not happening. So, So they need a goalie. They maybe even need a backup goalie. Like they may, they may need two goalies. I would say if so, with this team that they currently have, if you have Brian Elliott out there, I'm I'm content with Elliott or Neuberth as my number two. They're not 100%. winning. Oh, okay, as your number two, I was like, I thought you were about to say number one, and I was like, no, not. I was like, they just, I'm. They may be a like, they're probably a playoff team again. I think they're going to be a playoff team, but I just don't know. You don't scare me with that goal, honey. They need another defenseman. Like they just, they they need another defenseman because like, and this is a, this this is a weird team because like they have a ton of right D which is like unheard of, and not very many lefty. But like their their defense is just kind of like okay. But they they do have one of my favorite young defensemen in the league. Yes, but that doesn't Ivan Provorov. You've got like their team, Shane Gostas Bear. They somehow still have Andrew McDonald on this team. Andrew McDonald. Um, can't be good. No, I'm um, sure he's not. As a as a former hitman, I really want Travis Sanheim to be good. Um, yet to show that he is, and at 22, that clock's starting to tick there. Um, so I think you know if he can show that he can be um, a solid you know defenseman, 
I would support 100% them bringing in someone else um, on that on that back end. Uh, yeah, Andrew McDonald. Like, so like, like you know, and then I don't know. Do you need you? You probably I don't know if you need another piece up front, but it wouldn't hurt. Like, so that's what I'm saying. Like three or four pieces to get this to like a next level team. They're a good team. Like I like the J. Like JVR is good. I'm I'm happy. Like he got paid. He's gonna we're going back to Philly. But like, he's I gonna don't replace know. Wayne Simmons, who they everyone talks like he's already gone from the flyers yeah and like they're a good team they got like i love like i love claude giro like for check like they're good players couturier is one of the best defense did he win the defensive one again this year or for the first time i don't know he's a good player though he very much so and like it's just like you hope nolan patrick takes a step this could be a good team i just think the defense and the goaltending is just isn't where you probably need it to be. Yeah, and this is it's a, a weirdly young team for a team that I feel like well, and it's not I feel like this core has been together for quite some time. And at when a core's been together, you know, Giroux's thirty, Voracek's twenty nine, Wayne Simmons is thirty. When your core starts to age, I start to think like, okay, this team is old, but they're not. They've managed to, you know, scout well, draft well, bring in guys like Gostas Bear. Uh, you know, they used their high picks. You know, they, they drafted mid, but they drafted well. Provorov was, what, an eighth overall pick. Um, and then you, you win a lottery and you draft Nolan Patrick. Uh, you know, not the best year to win a lottery, but still good. Um, they didn't win that, did they? Oh, well, they, they, they moved into the top they moved, three. Right, right, right. I was like, because Patrick was second, right? Yeah, yeah, because uh, the Devils won it, but they finished second, uh, which they they shouldn't have been there. And so I think you, you you have these pieces that they've managed to bring around. As a Flyers fan, I'd be very happy with the situation that we have bringing in JBR this offseason. Really, the the only big move that they made. Um, I'd like that. It solidifies it. If Wayne Simmons leaves, if Wayne Simmons sticks around, I'm fine with that too. Because this is a, a team that has a, you know, even this year, they have a ton of cap space. This is not an expensive roster. Yeah. And you, you look at the fact that, like, they're not going to be paying Laterra in the next season. They're not going to be paying, uh, you know, Andrew McDonald two years from now. Who knows who they're going to have in net? They're going to pay someone some money to play backup behind Carter Hart, I assume is their, their ultimate plan. And if that doesn't work, then you're in the same situation you're in now where you're trying to find a goalie. So I think a lot of how this team's trajectory goes is, is Carter Hart, Carey Price, or is Carter Hart, Brian Elliott? Or they sign Bobrovsky. Just bring him back. Retread that. Well, he's better than he was. I was, I forgot that he was there. So he started, yeah. right? No, that's where he ended. That's where he signed like the giant contract. You, you're you're thinking Brzgalov. Oh, I am thinking Brzgalov. Yeah, Bobrovsky started there. He was traded for like a third round pick or something like that. Right. It was not. It was not a good a good trade. He wasn't. He was not good. He was not very good as a Philadelphia Flyer. He no. had a he had an eight point one. Goals against average in the playoffs one year for them. Yeah, you're right. That's not good. It's really bad. Um, it was a, a second round pick that he was traded for. Oh, well, that's, that's better. That's just so much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, if they had Rizgalov, that not Rizgalov, Bobrovsky, maybe they should have, maybe Russian goaltenders should diversify. Flyers, Russian goaltenders need to diversify their names. They're too close to each other. That's my problem. Um, yeah. If you sign Bobrovsky, not Brizgalov, do not bring back Brizgalov. Do bring back Bobrovsky. That'd be good. I would support that decision. Do it. There you go. We just solved the Flyers' solutions and problems. You're welcome, team. Playoff team next year? I say yeah. It's a tough division, but they're good. They're, um, yeah, they're a good team. They got better than they were last year. Like, this is the same. If you take the same team from last year and you put JVR on it, I think that's good, Joel. It makes you better, yeah. 
That's a that's a thing that you want. You better. Do you, um, which guy do you want to sign your team to sign a PTO on? <laughs> Am I given a list? I'm gonna or just want, like in general. Give, huh. give me a give me some Let's options. See. Um, well, cause, cause like, I'll, I'll Jason, take any of them. I don't really. Jason Garrison, he's, cause like, he signed a PTO with the Oilers. Yeah. Mark Letestu, let's go like Sean Mathias, Josh don't, Georges. Let's not waste our time on Mathias. Um, I'd go Cody Franson is a guy that I would want. That's, to, that's the guy for everyone, right? I think, well, that's the guy for every, like, Anyone who has like a, hey, let's look at some analytics. And then you look at it and you're like, oh, look at that. And then teams say no. Um, Clayton Stoner. Did he play last year? I don't think he played last year. Um, On the NHL, at least. Yeah. Luca, Luca Spiza. Yeah. That'd be all right. Brandon Davidson. Rick Nash. Rick Nash is not signing a PTO. <laughs> He's the, like, is he... Is he officially going to retire? He hasn't or said, is, but he's not he... signing a PTO. Like he, someone would give no. him a, if he wanted no, to play. Exactly. Yeah, if Rick Nash is going to play, that's a thing that he'll do. But um, yeah, this is this is officially PTO season, so we'll start to see those rolling in, especially as camps open up. Nick um, Shore. That's like that's the other the, analytics. That's, that's the off the uh, the forward. Yeah, that everyone wants. Yeah. Um. Well, next week, Joel, it's going to be our last summer hot seat. Let's see who is... We talked about it last week. We are going to be removing the Washington Capitals from this, just so that we don't have... like It it either leaves us with two one week or one. We talked a lot about the Capitals this year. Here are the teams left to be discussed. The Tampa Bay Lightning, Vancouver Canucks... Vegas Golden Knights. Well, who, who would you rather? Who would you rather we ha- include in this? Vegas or Washington? One of those two is getting left out. I don't want to talk about either of them. Just leave them both out. It's so just Tampa, Vancouver, and Winnipeg. Yeah. There you go. That's our. Those are our options for our last two teams. Unless Tampa, you wanted to talk about one of those teams. We've talked a lot about both. They they met in the finals. We they got lots of uh lots of airtime. Yeah, they don't throughout need more. The year. Forget them. There you go. That's your punishment. That's your suspension. We were gonna le- let you in Vegas for giving Nate Schmidt steroids. You get left out of the summer hot seat. <laughs> you just uh, you can put Toronto in there. No, nah, that's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> there you go. Tampa, Vancouver, and Winnipeg. Those are our final three teams. Head over to Twitter. Vote on the poll. One of those teams will be discussed next week. And then we've got to start previewing some of these bad boys. Start our season preview. That'll be coming after. Maybe we'll start next week. Who knows? We've got like three or four shows before the season starts. Four. Yeah, we've, we've got, yeah, four shows before the season starts. Four Mondays. But we got like, and then like a special show coming up. Ooh. I don't even know what that means. I'm pretty so I look sure. forward to that. Don't you think? I'm pretty sure. I'm oh, gonna... you're right. We do have a special show coming up because this is this is episode number 196. So, like the start of the season. The start of the season is going to be our, unless we have a blank line, which I know that that's slated to be in there. So if a blank line takes the spot of one, the first episode after the season starts is number 200. There you go. That's going to be a great one. So we'll have to we'll have to see what we have in store for that. Who knows? Oh, we have plenty in store for that. That's like oh. it's going to be great. Well, stay tuned for what we have in store for that. I'm going to stay tuned for what we have in store for that. Um, you can head over to our Twitter, vote on that. Our Twitter for the summer hot seat is at Fourth Line Podcast. You know where to find us on there. We're on the Facebook. We're on the Twitter. The Alberta Podcast Network is a great place for. All things podcasting. If you're looking for some new shows, <clears throat> head on over to there. If you're saying, you know what? It's the fall. It's a, a new change of pace. I, I consider the start of September to be more of a new year than New Year's itself. I don't know about you, Joel. It's just, you know, summer starts, falls when you get back into the swing of things. Things start to ramp up. I know for your work, my work, um, everything kind of, that's that's more of a start than January 1st for sure. Um, 
And so if you're saying, you know what, I'm going to change things. I want to learn about something. I want to learn about something new. Let's say you, you're wanting to start a business. Well, you can head over to Alberta Podcast Network. There are many different business podcasts over there. Frank Reactions is one. It's a podcast about how companies can survive and thrive in the digital era by putting people first. And I think that's a hugely important thing. Uh, you know, can be, the, the value of people is a big thing. So Frank Reactions, you can go to frankonlinemarketing.com and find out all of what they have to tell you over there. And then when you're done there, head to the fourthlinepodcast.com for all things Fourth Line Podcast and get up to speed on what we have and see episode 196. You just finished listening to 196. 197 will be out for you next week. 200 is coming up very soon. And until next week, Boom City. <laughs> <laughs>